When I first degoogled my very first phone, shortly thereafter, I went on a trip with some friends out near some campgrounds out near Borrego Springs down in Southern California. And most of you probably aren't familiar with the San Diego area, but to get from the San Diego city into the high desert out there, you need to drive through some mountain roads that are incredibly windy and there's a lot of unexpected turns. At the time, I was very gung-ho about open source and an open platform with my Android open source project phone and I was running open street maps at the time. So excited, so young, so naive. Needless to say, I got lost. And I got lost in a little town called Julian. And Julian is a beautiful town. It's really not a bad place to get lost in. But I remember just being so grateful that no one was awake at 6 a.m. in the morning to see me driving around like an idiot. I wished desperately at the time that I had printed out a map using MapQuest or had a Thomas Guide with me. And for you Zoomers out there, Thomas Guide is Old English for map. OpenStreetMaps is a great project. It's a fantastic idea, crowdsourcing of addresses and points of interest, but the navigation in it could use some work and the user interface is bass backwards. It's terrible. So today we're going to be talking about GPS software, and this is the number one thing with a degoogled Android phone that you need to watch out for is getting mapping software that will meet your needs when you're in an unusual area because we've gotten so far away from having maps. I'm not even sure where you would buy a Thomas Guide anymore besides Amazon, and that's not going to help you when you're in a strange area. It used to be you'd go into a gas station or something. So the mapping software that I'm going to recommend is Magic Earth. Rob Braxman talks about ways working without Google Apps, but Magic Earth actually works on a de-Googled Android phone, and they actually pay lip service to maintaining user privacy and not doing tracking. Also, they use OpenStreetMaps, and they're a contributor. It is closed source software, so the security may not be what we'd hope, and really I'd prefer to be showing you something from the F-Droid store right now, but sadly that is not an option. For this to work, you will need the F-Droid store, where you'll need to install Aurora, and then you'll also need MicroG for the Aurora store to work. With MicroG, you're going to want to go into self-check and make sure that all of these checkboxes under permissions granted are checked off so that the Aurora store and your mapping software will be able to connect. Now we're going to go into the Aurora store and we're going to search for Magic Earth. And this is a actually cool app. And go through the downloading process. Magic Earth is actually a very simple yet very usable app. There's a lot of functionality in it. It even has some AI dash cam stuff that's supposed to warn you when you're following too closely or about to rear in someone or if there's a pedestrian in front of you. It's really cool. I've never used any of that functionality. It's called trip recording or dash cam. And we'll go through and explore that a bit as we go through the way that the app works. It also has all of the stuff that you would expect in something like a Waze, which who knows what kind of stuff Google's recording about you when you're using Waze. And it looks like it's installed. So let's go ahead and open it up and have a look at what is in here. Now, it may be a little bit confused as to where I am because of the VPN. 
and they come up right away. Privacy first. Our rules are simple. We do not track you. We do not profile you. We do not trade your personal data. Moreover, we do not have it. Bottom line, we respect your privacy. Again, it's a closed source app. Hopefully, or maybe they'll release it into the F-Droid store. I'm not exactly sure what their profit model is. I'm going to allow this to discover my location all the time. One thing, even with Waze or with Magic Earth, I've found that the GPS can get a little bit finicky, and I think it's because the Android open source drivers are not quite as good as the Google drivers. After a minute of waiting, it actually did pick up my location, even in this cave. So we're going to go back into the app, and we're going to investigate a little bit the functionality that's here. It just changed from day to nighttime. Before it was set to white, which is the daytime mode. It's set to automatically switch to nighttime. I'm going to have to blur out this portion of the map because I don't want to show exactly where I live. But we're going to start with settings. Instead of going left to right, we're going to start over here on the right and really quickly review what settings are included in this app. Once we review that information, we'll go over into this left-hand panel. And it's misbehaving a little bit because I've got a lot of stuff going on right now. Mobile data is set, on, set to on, so it'll pull information from our local network. If you're on VPN, you may want to turn that off so it pulls more accurate information. General goes through battery mode, distances, preferences. With battery mode, normal means high. As for sound, I recommend changing your voice, and I, I did this off screen from Michael to Emily. It's a little unnerving to hear a male give you your navigation for some reason. And some of my friends, we went on a trip to Austin. They were busting my balls for that. We'll exit out of here. Warnings, it'll give you information about traffic cameras and speed limits and all kinds of stuff. I'm sure some of this comes into play when you're using it as a dash cam more often. Dash cam AI. If you mount this to a suction cup on your windshield, it'll give you information about when you need to speed up, slow down, whether there's a pedestrian in front of you, all kinds of stuff. And this is looks like it's pretty customizable. Navigation, you can navigate whether you're on foot, on bike, in a car. Normally I just navigate in a car, but I do have an e-bike. I made another video about that, so the bike option is pretty handy. Advanced settings. It looks like it'll report traffic events for you, which I'm guessing are like car accidents. Not 100% sure on that. Never had a, an event to record. I'm not going to reset to default, so let's back out here. And then support, it'll go into the whole privacy first, we don't track you information, which is good to hear, even if they possibly don't follow it, because this is a closed source app. Going back to the left-hand panel, the very first area, because we've given a quick review of the settings here, if I didn't accidentally exit. For map layers, we can add in different information. These are all searchable items, so when you're searching for an address location, you can search by points of interest, traffic, 3D buildings, weather, speed cameras. It looks like all of this will get overlaid onto the app, but the points of interest information will show up during the search part when you're searching of where to go. Map styles, you can have terrain, which is going to show mountains. You can have satellite, which is going to show colors. Of course, gray in Southern California represents concrete because that's what it is. Brown is dirt, and green is usually mountains because that's the only place where trees grow. Standard is going to be what you'd be more used to if you were using Waze or coming over from Waze or Google Maps because it's just colored streets, so like Blue Street, Red Street, Green Street, just cartoonish looking streets. This area right here, this is where you download maps. This is a bit of a re-record of this section because the phone stopped recording, but you can actually download a Thomas guide like we talked about before of your local area. Right now I'm downloading a map of California and that's what you can search for here. And in this area, the middle button on the bottom 
shows which maps are currently downloading, and then this right button with the phone shows what you have on your phone right now. And the last thing we have here, you have trip recording. This is part of the AI dash cam capability. It'll actually record for you and you can even save your recordings, which might be something that you would want to do if you were recording and then you got into a car accident, you would want to record that so that you could protect yourself from any kind of frivolous lawsuit, something along those lines. So Magic Earth, it's a really cool application. I like it way more than OpenStreetMaps. I trust it infinitely more than Google Maps and Waze. As far as navigation capability, it is powered by OpenStreetMaps, which they're pretty good now, but they're not absolutely perfect. So I would rank, as far as usability of mapping software, I'd probably put Google Maps still slightly above it, and then I'd put this roughly at parity with Waze. And the reason why I'd put it at parity with Waze is because Waze will sometimes redirect you in traffic at a random time. I've had it tell me to turn right and then get pissed off at me for turning right. Because this app doesn't do that, but Waze has slightly better mapping in it, I put them at roughly parity as far as functionality. When you are using an Android open source project phone, one of the things to consider is that GPS software or GPS apps might take a little while to pick up your location. And one of the reasons I think this might be is when you're using Google Apps, Google is collecting your telemetry data all the time and then sending it off to Google. And I think these mapping applications use those logs to figure out where you were so that they have that information from a few minutes ago. So they're, they don't have to ping this GPS satellite immediately to tell where your location is. So just be aware that when you start up your map, mapping application, it might take a few minutes to figure out where you are and then the application will start up and it should work beautifully. This is the number one most important app that I think someone with an Android open source project Google free phone would want. I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Thanks for stopping by. This is Nick signing out.